And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for being here. Because as someone pointed out earlier, you are here because you care, like a lot of people across this country, about the future of this country. And they are going to see the citizens' movement that was demonstrated on November the, third, November the 2nd of last year be bigger and more impactful in November of 2012. Let it be borne in mind that the tragedy of life does not lie in not reaching your goals. The tragedy lies in having no goals to reach for. It's not a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity to have no dreams. As you've heard, my parents had dreams, and you and I have dreams. And the American dream is under attack. That's the bad news. The good news is we are fighting back. We are fighting back with our faith. And we are fighting back with our freedom to fight back in the greatest country in the world when we don't like something going on in Washington, D.C. Now, Steve didn't give me a lot of time, so <laughs> rather than go through all and many of the ideas that I have learned from you and listeners to my radio show about what I call common sense solutions, you can pick one of those booklets up at our table afterwards. So let me do this. I want to share with you three of my guiding principles so you would know what type of leader I would be. You know what type of person I am. Three of my guiding principles that have guided my life, guided the decisions that I made when I was running companies, and has guided my own family. Guiding principle number one, and I'm only going to do three, do the right thing. Do the right thing. It was not right to sue the state of Arizona when they were simply trying to protect themselves. Do what's right. And it was not right, as indicated earlier, for the President of the United States to order the Justice Department to not enforce the Defense of Marriage Act. That was not right. But one of the things that you will always be able to count on from Herman Cain in any role of leadership, and that is to do what is right. Secondly, one of my guiding principles we have got to lead this nation from an entitlement society to an empowerment society. The Declaration of Independence points out those great words that we all remember and hear. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the last time I checked, I didn't see anything in there that said anything about a department of happy in Washington, D.C. There's no such thing. We've got to become an empowerment society. We've got to empower businesses to create jobs. Government can't create jobs by getting government out of the way. We have got to empower the states to do what states do best, and that is to solve the people's problems in the state. Problems and issues that might be in Iowa or Georgia or another state, they can't be solved from Washington, D.C. I ask you a rhetorical question. When was the last thing anything was micromanaged from Washington, D.C., and it worked? <laughs> Time's up. We've got to move from an entitlement society. And the only way we're going to ever get our hands around the runaway spending is we have to take those programs that have mis been misnamed entitlement programs. They started out as assistance programs, but now we call them entitlement programs. And the only way that we are going to get our hands around this runaway spending is that those programs have to be restructured and the states given more responsibility and authority to do what they do best, and that is to deal with the people's problems at the state level. Empowerment, not entitlement. <laughs> and 
And then my third guiding principle that I want to share with you is not about us. It's not about us. Our founding fathers did their job. We must all now be the defending fathers. We have to defend the life of the unborn. We must defend, we must defend those principles that this nation was founded upon. We must defend the future of this nation today with, as Ralph said, our time, our talent, and our individual treasures. And when I was asked, whatever gave you the crazy idea of running for president, this wasn't something that I had dreamed about all my life or aspired to do all of my life. And if you're familiar with my background in many instances, I was compelled into a position of leadership. And this whole journey for me, and I didn't know it at the time, started in January 1999 when my first grandchild was born. My wife, for 42 years, we have a 39-year-old daughter, 32-year-old son, and three grandchildren. And on January the 22nd, 1999, my granddaughter, Selena, was born. And I didn't think that I was going to make it back to the hospital from an out-of-town trip in time to be there when she was born. But as God's will prevailed, I did get there in time. And when I got to the hospital, my wife came out and told me that we now have a granddaughter. Obviously, I was thrilled. We were both thrilled. I went inside of the delivery room and my daughter, I said, are you doing okay, Melanie? She said, yes. Is the baby okay? Yes. And then my daughter said, Dad, would you like to hold her? Yes, of course. I took this little 15-minute-old baby in my arms, looked at that little face, and the first thought that went through my mind wasn't about how do I ensure her future. The first thought that went through my mind was what do I do to help make this a better nation and a better world? That's where my journey started in order to be here for this honored occasion. And so my third guiding principle is not about us. It's about the grandchildren. It's not about us. Ask any grandparent. And even though the liberals starting in the White House are trying to change this nation, I have a breaking news announcement for President Obama. The liberals in Washington, D.C. and the liberals all over this great nation. The United States of America is not going to become the United States of Europe, not on our watch. Thank you.